Have, raise your hand if you've been to the zoo before. Awesome. We can see so many amazing animals at the zoo. I bet you guys are thinking about all of those animals in your heads right now. But I have three animals with me today that I like to think of as secret behind the scenes animals that most people don't get to see when they come to the zoo. So these animals, they visit schools and other places, but most people don't get to see them when they come to the zoo. Now we're gonna talk about a really special type of animal today. The type of animal that we're going to talk about today are animals that only, for the most part, like to be active at night. Now let's think about us for a moment. When is it that we're awake? Raise your hand. When are we awake for the most part? Yes. When the sun is up. When the sun is up. Yeah. Our bodies have a natural kind of rhythm that tell us that when the sun's up, usually we're awake. Now, does that mean that we never take naps? No, we take naps sometimes too, right? But for the most part, we are what's called diurnal. Now that's a big fancy word that basically just means we're awake at night and when do we sleep? Or excuse me, we're awake during the day and when do we sleep? Night. At night, yeah. But there are so many animals in the world that are the opposite of us, that are the opposite of diurnal. I wonder if anybody knows what that word is for animals who rest during the day and are active at night. Yes. Nocturnal. Nocturnal. Very good. Can we all say that word together? Because I'm going to be saying it so many times in the next half hour. Nocturnal. Nocturnal. Now, sometimes I hear really little kids say nocturnal, but it's not <laughs> nocturnal, right? <laughs> nocturnal. So, believe it or not, there are tons of animals around us that are nocturnal, and we might not know they're there because they don't come out during the day. They're resting during the day, hidden, excuse me, hidden away somewhere safe so predators don't see them, and then at night they're active. Now, like what? Like a peewee? Oh, you know some really interesting animals there. That's awesome. How about we cut out at the end if there's any special nocturnal animals that you guys think of that I haven't mentioned? Maybe you can share them with me. That would be really cool. Okay, so today I have three nocturnal animals with me today. One is a bird, one is a reptile, and one is a mammal, which means it has fur or hair like we do. So we can kind of see that nocturnal animals can be all sorts of different animals. It's just not one type. Well, I'm going to start off today by showing you my first one. Now, this animal that I'm about to show you is one of my favorites at the zoo. He is amazing. Now, in order for him to navigate the world at night, he has to have some special adaptations. Now, we're going to see, I'm going to let you guys try to, try to observe him, and you tell me what are these adaptations. We'll talk about the here in a second. I'm going to put this on the ground because Sometimes birds make messes. And we're gonna see them. We're gonna see them. Yeah. Okay, let's we'll see them a little bit right now. Now here's what I ask of you guys. He is a nocturnal animal. So he is not necessarily used to humans being very loud around him, right? So we're gonna try to stay nice and calm and quiet. Call him a cute baby 
Bible and knew what that meant, he would be mad because he's not a baby. Isn't that amazing? He is full grown. He's you're right. There are some animals that are just really small, and he's a very small type of owl. So even though he looks so petite, so small, he's an adult. Now the other thing is that he looks cute and cuddly to us because he's got those beautiful feathers and the big eyes. But if you were a little mouse, would he be very cute to you? No. No. Why wouldn't he be cute? What would he do to a mouse? He would eat it. He would eat it. Yeah. He is a very, very fierce, very strong and brave predator. He eats other animals. Now he's got some very special tools to eat other animals. If we need to eat a steak, we have our moms or dads, grandmas or grandpas cut the steak up for us, right? With a knife and a fork. Can he use a knife and a fork? No. no. <laughs> he has to. He has to use the tools that are built into his body. So he's not very sharp. Oh, it's okay. I've got a little. He's got very sharp talons, claws called talons. And not only does he have sharp talons, but his toes are really, really strong. So he can grab a hold of something and hang on to it really, really tight. Now he's got a very special mouth as well. What is a bird's mouth called? A beak. A beak, you're right. Now his beak is not like a hummingbird's beak. It is not like pigeon's beak. It is very, very sharp and curved, and it's used to help him tear meat from the meat animals that he eats. So he likes to be active at night to hunt for his food. Now because he's nocturnal, he has to have special adaptations that allow him to get around at night. Take a look at him. What do we notice about him that might help him move through the world at night? You had your hand up, my friend, in the back. What do you think? His wings. His wings. Oh, I'm so glad you mentioned his wings. And he has neck wings. Yeah, so let's talk about the first one. He's got wings with very, very special feathers. Now, whether I wanted to him to or not, Dr. Do kind of flew a little bit there. But did you know what I noticed? We didn't really hear his wings whenever he did that. Did you hear how quiet it was when he was flapping his wings? So some birds who come out during the day, they've got feathers that make a lot of noise. Would you like to flap those for us? Listen very carefully. Do you hear that? <laughs> Do you hear that? That's loud, and that's just one feather. So imagine if the whole wing was moving like that. You would definitely hear that bird. This is from a vulture. Now, let's look, let's try this feather. Now, this isn't one of Dr. Wu's feathers, but this is a feather from a great horn owl. Do we hear it? It's quiet. When owls fly, they fly silently. So they can sneak up on the food that they are going to grab, and that little animal never even knew that the owl was there. Feathers are one adaptation that they have to keep them safe at night and help navigate the world. What's another one? His eyesight. His eyesight. Does he have big eyes or what? Now, he has a kind of, he always has kind of a funny look on his face. He's always kind of looking a little suspicious at us. But his eyes are huge. His eyes are so enormous. They take up so much room inside of his head. Guess what he doesn't have room for? Well, kind of. Owls don't have a very large brain. <laughs> and I know that sometimes we hear about the wise old owl, but they're not the smartest birds in the world. Sorry, Dr. Now, they also don't have room in their skull for eye muscles. We have muscles behind our eyes that help us move our eyes. I want you guys to try something. Can you hold your head still? So just keep your head facing forward. Don't move your head. Can you look up at the ceiling without moving your head? Yes, you can. Can you look down at the ground without moving your head? Can you look to the left? Can you look to the
to the right. We don't have to move our heads to see a lot of different things, do we? But Dr. Who here, his eyes only point straight forward. He doesn't have room for those eye muscles. So his eyes always go straight forward. That's why he moves his head around a lot. Because any little thing that he wants to see, he has to move his whole head to do it. But his eyes are perfect for seeing long distance at night in the dark. He's got really, really great night vision. I want to show you guys something kind of funny. Are you ready for something really silly? Now, if our eyes were as big, go ahead. If I, I'm sorry, if, I up, if our eyes were as big in our heads as Doctor Who's are in his head, our eyeballs would be that big. <laughs> Can you imagine? That would be so ridiculous. I'm glad our eyes aren't that big. <laughs> they are huge. <laughs> Now, we have other senses, other, thank you so much. We have other senses other than eyesight. We can touch, we can taste, we can smell. What am I missing? We can feel. Hearing. We can hear. Even better than his eyesight is his sense of hearing. Owls have an incredible sense of hearing. So what he'll do, he'll sit up maybe in a tree, and he'll look, but he'll also really be listening. So he'll listen to the littlest, the tiniest little sounds of little animals screaming across the forest floor, and he can pinpoint exactly where those sounds are coming from. He maybe can see them with his eyes, he swoops down silently, and he catches his food so easily. Isn't that incredible? Now, he's very small, right? Do you think there might be other animals that could yeah. yeah, because he's so small. So during the day, he, and at night too, he wants to stay as hidden as possible. So there's that photo right there. Those are a couple of screech owls in a tree. Look at that camouflage. Did you notice when we looked at Dr. Who how much his feathers look like tree bark? It is amazing. Bigger owls, like great horned owls, barred owls, they might eat a screech owl. So he has to stay very, very well hidden in the forest. Mm -hmm. Exactly, he camouflages, so he's really hard to see. When they close their eyes, they even have feathers on their eyelids. So it's really, really difficult to see them. Oh, I also wanted you to notice, now we can't see it very well, but he's got these feathers on the side of his head that like horns a little bit. Can you kind of see them? Kind of. Now they're kind of low right now. Those feathers are not his ears. His ears are on the side of his head. Those feathers tell us what kind of mood he's in. It's how they communicate with each other. So sometimes, maybe if an animal does see him, he'll try to make himself look big and scary. He'll make his body really, really tall and skinny and make those feather tufts stick straight up and look really scary. And then maybe if he's trying to stay really hidden, he'll kind of shrink his body low and put those feather tufts back. So it's a way that owls talk to each other, communicate with each other. Eggs, yeah. They lay eggs. Now, I have another type of animal here with me today. This type of animal is called a reptile. Hmm. Have you heard that word before, reptile? Yeah. Maybe? Like a alligator. Yes, like an alligator. Animals who are covered in scales. Now, sometimes reptiles lay eggs, but sometimes they don't. So it kind of depends. Now, 
maybe you have a ball python too. Well, ball pythons come, they don't live around here like the screech owl does, they come from the continent of Africa. And in Africa, they are, look at him put his head up like that, they are a nocturnal snake. So they like to be active once the sun goes down and it gets a little bit darker outside. Now, these types of snakes, they don't like to climb up into the trees too much. They like to stay mostly down on the ground. Maybe they'll climb over rocks, or I should say slither over rocks or over branches. Um, but they find their food in a really unique way. Now, have you noticed who's sticking his tongue out at us? Yeah. He's not doing that to be rude. He's not trying to be silly. He's picking up smells. Snakes, sort of, smell with their tongue. Isn't that weird? Yeah. What do we smell with? No. Our nose. Well, Jumanji has a nose too. He uses his nose to breathe, just like we can also breathe through our nose. But his tongue helps him to kind of taste or smell the air around him. That helps lead him to his food. Now, something even more important that he uses to lead him to food at night when it's dark is he has a way to sense heat. Now, our bodies are nice and warm, aren't they? Yeah? Our bodies are warmer than this wood right here. I'm touching it and it's really cold. Our bodies are warmer than my phone right now. Our bodies are warm. That's part of being a living thing. We're very warm. Animals have warm too. So at night, when he's out looking for his food, he's able to sense where things are warm. And where things are warm are most likely where he can find some food. So he uses that sense of picking up the heat to let them know where he can go. I'm gonna come a little bit closer with him if that's okay with you guys. Kind of take a look at him. I want you to notice his pattern. You mentioned his pattern here. His pattern also helps him to camouflage. So what does camouflage mean? What does that mean again? Blend, Blend in with their surroundings. Since he likes to stay mostly down on the ground, it wouldn't make sense for him to be maybe bright green like some tree pythons are. He would prefer to be this beautiful brown, these shades of brown with the spots to help him blend in with the brown around him. Now I wonder what, we're gonna put our hands down for just a second, friends. I wonder what kind of, he's not. I wonder what kinds of animals this python would eat. Do you think he'd be able to eat a deer? No. no. Why not? It's way too big for him. What do you think he might be looking to eat? Yes. A rat. A rat would be an excellent idea. What do you think? You've got snakes at home. What do you need them? We need them. After. Mice. Mm -hmm. They might eat mice. Yeah. Possums. Possums. If there were possums in Africa and they were small enough, yes, he would eat possums. <laughs> Yeah, so they eat a whole, they'll, they'll pretty eat, much eat. Any animal that's small enough for them to swallow, um, they don't eat salads, they don't eat fruits and veggies, they only eat other animals. I think I saved my cutest for last. And this one has some really amazing adaptations that allow it to live as a nocturnal animal. So without much further ado, I'm gonna take this one out for you. I'm gonna say, you guys are doing a wonderful job, too. All of them in common. 
their teeth in the front, two top teeth, two bottom teeth, always keep growing. They grow and grow and grow throughout their entire life. What do you think they have to do to keep their teeth from growing too long? What do they do? What does a beaver do? Chews on trees, chews on wood, right? So they have to have lots of things to chew on. Now chinchillas, they come from another continent. We've seen animals from around the world. They come from the continent just below where we are, South America. They live way up high in the mountains in South America. It's like a big high, tall desert. It gets really cold up there. How does he stay warm? What do you think? His fur. It is so incredibly soft. Now his fur also keeps him safe from predators. Guess what it does? If an animal reaches out and tries to grab a hold of Charlie, there's a good chance they're only going to get a hold of his fur. And then his body does something amazing. It automatically lets go of that fur, and he gets away, he runs away to safety. That animal who tried to eat him has a mouthful of his fur and is wondering where their lunch went. It's really silly. <laughs> now, <laughs> now at night, they come out from their crevices, from their burrows. They hide down in between the rocks during the day. And at night they come out and they use a couple special adaptations to navigate. What does he have that's really, really big? What do you notice? Yeah. What do you notice? His whiskers. He's got those whiskers that they're moving around, aren't they? Yeah. He uses those whiskers to feel around at night and know where it's safe to go and what sort of little crevices in the rocks have enough space for him to fit. What else do we notice about him? He has, oh, he didn't like what I did that. He has huge ears. His sense of hearing is so important so he can listen out for those predators that might be around. Now, chinchillas also like to live in big groups. They say there's safety in numbers. That means that the more of them around, the safer it can be for them because they talk to each other. They give out different warning calls. They, they have a whole language of their own that can let them know if predators are coming, when it's safe to come out, really helps to keep them safe. They're also great at jumping. Um, oh, all sorts of different things. Now, I do want to mention, I'm going to come just a little closer. I do want to mention, I'm going to walk through your rows here, that they are endangered in the wild. Isn't that so sad? Now, the reason that they're endangered is because of their fur. It used to be really popular to make fur coats out of chinchillas. Isn't that so sad? And sometimes they are still being hunted in the wild for their fur, but it is illegal now. And hopefully their numbers will get back up so that there will be chinchillas around in the world for many, many years.